Welcome to our Monticello live stream today. Um, I'm Melanie Boyer and I'm here with my colleague, Diane Aaron Price. She's Monticello's Associate Curator of Decorative Arts. And today we're gonna to be talking about our newest book, which we have here. Um, it's titled Thomas Jefferson at Monticello, Architecture, Landscape, Collection, Books, Food and Wine. So thank you for joining us online. Please put any comments that you have for Diane. Great. Or any questions in the comments and um, let us know where you're joining from. So, um, Diane, can you tell us a little bit about this book? Well, this book was a few years in the making. Um, it started uh, before we uh, all experienced our, our changed lifestyles during COVID, but I've been thrilled to be able to work on it for uh, pretty much the entire stretch of this project. And now you're looking at the dust jacket cover and the most compelling, beautiful image of Monticello's uh, West Front. Is that the West Front? The East, East Front. Front. <laughs> Excuse me, apologies. Um, but I wanted to let you know, really, this is two books in one. First book is, um, we're really exploring the topic of Thomas Jefferson and his dedication to the arts here at Monticello. What he did um, to uh, explore um, arts and all its forms here, uh, specifically at his home on the Little Mountain. And then also it's a second book. It, it relates exactly to the stunning image that we're showing you. We have the talented and singular and generous uh, art uh, photographer, Miguel Floros Viana, who came at least three times to join, pretty much move in with us as staff and neighbor to take um, photographs and really use Monticello as his workshop in the clouds, his studio. So together there's uh, remarkable content and um, imagery that people will see Monticello in a whole new light. Great, and so you mentioned um, the photographer, Miguel Flores Grass. Can you tell us about some of the yes. essays? Well, we are fortunate. It was um, wonderful for a number of the staff to collaborate and to learn from um, Annette Gordon-Reed, John Meacham, Alice Waters, if you're interested in food today, or uh, I was excited to work with Xavier Salomon, who is the curator at the Frick, and um, Thomas Woltz, who's a specialist in landscapes, Gil Schaefer, who uh, is a, an architect and a really has a, a interesting perspective to bring on uh, the architecture of Monticello. Carla Hayden, who is uh, the head of the Library of Congress, working on uh, uh, insightful words on Jefferson as a book collector. And Jay McInerney, who uh, has a really lighthearted, a, a very engaging walk through Jefferson and wine, both in Europe and how important wine was here. Have I, have I included you got everyone? them all? <laughs> yes. Um, and of course, it's edited by our foundation president, Leslie yes, Green Bowman, Leslie Green and Bowman. Charlotte Moss. And Charlotte Moss. And um, there was some contact too with the folks at Rizzoli who mm -hmm. published the book, the editors. Um, of the book is dramatically, mm -hmm. you know, the book designer did an amazing job. Um, so maybe. I just wanted to add a little something mm -hmm. about what these um, scholars brought to this project. And one thing that I think encompasses this is that they, they were studying both the natural and the material culture of um, what Jefferson was trying to accomplish here at Monticello. Mm -hmm. So on the most um, broadest sense, um, maybe we could see another image. I think the next image might be helpful. Great, here's a view of the Rivanna mm -hmm. River that Miguel took, um, you know, uh, these images, keep in mind, it was uh, complicated to get some of these views and to take time to, you know, bushwhack to the river and, and accomplish these images. But again, this natural culture, the idea of the broader landscape, the Rivanna, how the mountaintop and the dwelling came to be, uh, and then, Moving inwards to the garden, uh, again, mm -hmm. this nature as, as a, a ferme orne, a, an ornamental farm where Jefferson experiments with so many varieties of plants and grapes. Um, 
And here you're looking at one of the squares of the vegetable garden at Monticello. Um, and then also the material culture, which is a little bit more my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but um, having experts, you know, cast a, a new eye, a new perspective on what Jefferson's trying to accomplish artistically on the inside, like, uh, or uh, culturally as far as introducing the Americans to um, their own American culture, as far as uh, what Lewis and Clark is finding out in the West. Uh, and um, moving inwards, really inwards. We're not just talking about Jefferson in this book. We're also making um, it very clear, and Ed Gordon-Reed says it so very well, that Monticello offers both the best and the worst that is America. And um, none of this was possible without the enslaved laborers and artisans who, who worked so very hard and who were incredibly talented and dedicated. Well, I don't want to say dedicated, but who um, just created what we're seeing today. So uh, it's just encompassing. Mm -hmm. There's so much content and so much um, um, eloquent beauty. And I should tell you what you're looking at. You've probably never seen this shot before. It's one of my favorite views in the book. And this is the headstone that was found on the grounds at Monticello that uh, John Hemings carved for his beloved and uh, wife, Priscilla Hemings, when she died. And there it is framed in this bed of straw, which um, in some ways is, is more evocative than if it had been installed in a cemetery. I, I, I think it's stunning. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you've talked a little bit about some of the content and the artistry. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? I mean, one thing I just know that he, I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about that as we go through some of the images as well, but maybe some more about the content. All right. More. All right. Um, could we have the next image? All right. So as an art historian, um, visually the content uh, was, um, so inspiring when I got to work with Miguel and the entire group. Keep in mind, we would be here early in the morning, later in the evening after our visitors left, um, occasionally on, on the weekends. Uh, and he would come into a room and he would recognize where that beauty lay or where the story was. So for those of you who've been on the second floor at Monticello, this is a two page spread from our new book. And what you're seeing is the room where we interpret Aunt Marx's life. And that's her bed and bed curtains on uh, the one page. And reflected in the mirror, you see the same object. But um, he was particularly talented, Miguel, with using light and using mirrors and how we end up looking through this book to that phrase, looking through a glass darkly. It, it, gives you a sense of time travel mm -hmm. and also timelessness. So um, there's just one example. Mm -hmm. um, can we see another image? Oh, yeah. This one was so dazzling when I saw the, the uh, you know, test proof that I really had to stop and think about it. But what you're seeing here, for those of you who've been in the dining room at Monticello, Miguel's actually photographing a print that's on the wall, on the window side wall of the dining room. But he um, amazingly caught the reflection in the glass on the in-frame print. And so overlaid that is the mirror that's on the opposite wall, the silver plated light uh, lamp, all of it um, just layer upon layer. Mm -hmm. So you also get a, a amazing use of color here too. Yeah, that's just extraordinary. It just was almost spine tingling when I saw <laughs> this one. Can I see another one? All right, this is, as the art historian in me, this is a juxtaposition that I wanted to show because um, both images are things that I'm very familiar with, the actual objects, but the way Miguel shot them, um, I saw something new that I never seen before. So um, the brick chimney stack is from Mulberry Row, an incredibly important survivor that we leave as a totem of the uh, enslaved workers, uh, particularly those who worked in the joiner shop where this stack centered that, that operation. 
But the way he's photographed it, you can see where the light is coming from, the, to, to my image, to the left side. It's raking light and it makes both the bricks and the individual stones mm -hmm. just come to life. You, you, you know, they, they never um, registered with me until mm -hmm. I saw this image. And the ladle, it, it's an important object from our collection. Martha Jefferson herself brought this silver ladle to, um, to her marriage with Thomas Jefferson. But it's such a simple shot. What it's sitting in is our acid-free paper. It's just um, crumpled as if our colleagues, our techs had just unfolded it so Miguel could see it. And he um, beautifully captures the hand hammering sort of irregular finish in the bowl of the ladle that mirrors what you're seeing in the paper. So um, here I am, an old saw here, almost 20 years, and I'm seeing things that I had really never noticed, or taking things to a new, to new level of insight and beauty. And I think you mentioned to me that he only used natural light. Is that correct? When he was shooting the photographs, he only he used uh, natural light. Mm -hmm. um, his um, assistant Brett Wood was amazing. The two of them would work together and maybe try and use, um, I don't even know the correct term, but you know, umbrellas or things to well, like focus the light, or, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. But no uh, artificial lights. Um, we, we can maybe better see that in some of the interior views. Uh, we'll maybe talk oh, about yeah, the we'll logistics of I'm that. I'm skipping ahead here, sorry. But um, <laughs> yes, it, it was, uh -huh. it's unusual. Frequently we have photo shoots and it's a little trying. You might know some of the rooms in Monticello are mm -hmm. small and, and having all the lights and uh, are, can be difficult to, to navigate, but uh, that was not an issue here. Um, this picture uh, is a favorite of mine is, uh, again, you know, looking at it as a composition, as an art historian, it's taken from uh, the threshold from the parlor looking into the dining room. And a few things you might see that it's, it's been stripped down. Miguel didn't want to have too many um, additional objects. He, he creates a sense of stillness in, his, in this space at Monticello by having just a few select pieces. So um, your eye initially focuses on that shield back chair in the front. And then he's composed it so that you notice the marble top table next mm -hmm. to it the picture that he allowed me to place on the table, and then moving towards the back of the console table. And then your eye automatically goes right into the tea room. And the way the furnishings are arranged there, it's almost as if you're about ready to step out um, through the porch door. Mm -hmm. uh, and we you know, take that kind of thing for granted, but that's a really complex image that, that he's uh, Right, such a sense of movement, even yes. in something that's so... Yes. Still, yeah. And this would be an example of using natural light as well. Mm -hmm. So I think um, you, you get the idea. There's a sense of um, timeless mm -hmm. and a little bit of mystery in these mm -hmm. images too. Um, so for example, we had to follow the light, the sun <laughs> throughout the house. So we would shoot something like the tea room in the evening when the sun is on that side of the house. Mm -hmm. Maybe another image? Here's one of my favorite <laughs> photo spreads uh, to show that Miguel and, and um, Brett together, they could compose, they could photograph anything and make it fabulous and interesting. Here is a, a spread from the book. These two are bookmarked, you know, book imaged, mm -hmm. book matched together, uh, the artichoke, and then the Anne Arundel melon. It's not only a beautiful melon, it has a really cool name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so examples of what you would see uh, when you're looking at the garden spread in the book. Mm -hmm. oh. Great. Oh, and you want to talk about this one, Diane? <laughs> okay. So everyone was very kind and let me pick one image. Uh, this is a, a beautiful piece uh, uh, of artistry from our collection, things that aren't typically on view, we would pull things, show um, 
Miguel examples see what might capture his imagination. And he took this image of some of the watches and lockets and mm -hmm. family hair that we have. Uh, and so sadly, we, we didn't put it in the book, but I wanted you to have one bonus image so that you could see. Um, just for the viewers just, of the live stream. Just, just, I mean, if, a, if an image like this doesn't make the book, it gives you an idea of what's in there. It's, it's phenomenal. Great, well that um, kind of segues into the next question, which you talked a little bit about, but can you tell us about your role at Monticello and how that ties into the book? Maybe some of the things that you did. Sure, yeah. So um, as a decorative arts person, when we started thinking about the book, we would compile lists of what we thought were some of the most important objects or room views that, that we would like to have, um, you know, Miguel cast his talented eye and take those images. So we worked mm -hmm. on that. And then um, when they were on site, uh, we always uh, represented some curatorial or sometimes restoration, our colleagues in education and visitor programs would help us. Uh, it's very complicated to, to shoot here, to do it before the public comes, or sometimes we would be uh, doing photography when we were open. And um, so we had to work together as a team to, to facilitate that. And um, the um, some of the things I got to work with M Miguel directly was, um, you know, like I said, with that picture mm -hmm. on the table, it was like, all right, I like this one object, Diane, and then I would place it and then, you know, we would go back and forth a little bit till, you know, he thought that we had the, had it in the right spot. And then he would take an amazing photograph. And mm -hmm. sometimes I was fortunate enough to, you know, be invited to look at this shot um, and see if we got it. So sometimes I got to in sign off time. on the <laughs> images, which was wonderful. Um, uh, some I mentioned that part of this book was shot during COVID. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was working from home and missed the last photo um, session. And so there was one or two times where I was FaceTime from home and they were like, Diane, we're in the kitchen. You'll see this amazing photo in the book. But which object should we put on this do stove? What, what tells the right story? And so that was kind of mm -hmm. in real time, but we, nothing would stop us. <laughs> we got there, we got an amazing um, experience. Well, I was really, really honored to, to be part of it. It really is um, a, a, quite a feat to try to do it during COVID. I mean, I know there are some the challenges and technology is able to help us in many ways, yeah. but that proved its own um, yeah. challenge. So. Um, one other thing that I enjoyed doing um, was uh, working with colleagues, particularly on uh, captions that you'll read in the mm -hmm. book mm -hmm. and fact checking, which sort of turned into <laughs> sort of a game, like a, a, a fact a tennis match where we would bounce back and forth uh, ideas or, or uh, facts, uh, quotes, make sure we're very careful to make sure that we got the right, most up-to-date information um, fact-checked and correctly represented for our readers. Mm -hmm. oh, great. Um, so switching a little bit, well, maybe it's just continuing what we've been talking about, kind of a behind the scenes look yes. at how this yes. happened. What does it take to create a book like this? Oh my goodness, is there, what's next on our photo walk through this book? Mm -hmm. All right, here you can, I, this, this was a day when I was not there, but I did get a phone call and they said, Diane, what is this mask, this amazing <laughs> mask that's on the shelf? What is this plaster face? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> and this is an example of how we wanted to ensure that the most uh, recent um, uh, views, everything, the photography was as up-to-date as possible. So between uh, one of Miguel's visits here, we had managed to get on loan this death mask of Oliver Cromwell mm -hmm. because we know Jefferson had two or three death masks um, in his private collection, one of them Cromwell. UVA had this image and loaned it to us and we'd installed it since he was here last. So you saw the view of the camera getting ready to take this picture in the um, library annex and here is this Again, that sort of still moody um, 
um, final product mm -hmm. of the view of the shelf with Jefferson's books and a very dead Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that white blotch is actually a rub on the nose. That's not a, oh, okay. uh, on the actual uh, mask itself. Hmm, okay. So there's a one example of what's happening, but um, I, my colleagues, particularly in restoration and um, our uh, museum tax and curatorial, they were there day after day, mm -hmm. earlier, early, you know, one or two days I w was there before dawn, but these are heroic um, colleagues <laughs> who came very early, um, in part to catch that light, to catch mm -hmm. that morning sun as it comes up. And what you're seeing here are um, some of the action shots of having um, how they managed to accomplish photography in the parlor. And I wanna point out, Miguel had been here earlier and had taken some views of the parlor, but, um, very early in COVID, we took that opportunity to repaint mm -hmm. the parlor, this appropriate soft blue gray that we know Jefferson had. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, speaking to this most up-to-date information, he came in and revisited the subject and shot it over again. So you might recall we have surface carpets to protect the original parquet and all of these things had to be moved. Everyone had to hold their breath. Um, stay back, you can see where the camera is, and then ultimately we have a shot. I think we have a final image of mm, what, yeah. what that looked like. Um, and it's very hard to shoot in Monticello. Uh, the exciting thing architecturally is Jefferson was so aware of having many windows mm -hmm. and natural light himself, so he probably would have been really appreciated Miguel's method of using natural light but it also makes it harder for us today to, to photograph because of the reflected light or everywhere you turn, there's another window. Mm -hmm. So um, all of that had to be um, ac accommodated when he's doing, uh, uh, using Monticello as his tableau. <laughs> um, so that, that's a remarkable. Mm -hmm. And there was no heights we wouldn't go to. <laughs> Uh, I wish I had been on this shot. I've never been on the roof at Monticello, but there is Miguel mm -hmm. uh, himself getting ready to take uh, what may some of our visitors think of as that sea view looking out down onto the plain of Virginia and um, with the sun coming up. Mm. It's, it's incredible. Uh, and there is uh, one of the final views that he got from that shot. So, uh, complicated, mm -hmm. um, challenging. It was um, very collegial. We had a lot of, of nice time mm -hmm. and have a, a moments to talk and learn a little bit about one another's work. And, um, and I think that camaraderie uh, shows in the book. Yeah, it's just a lot of behind the scenes work. Oh, and this is fun. Here's some of our colleagues. Yeah, and there we go. Here's an example. We didn't let Miguel up there alone. We value his health and well being. And so, um, already sort of touched on the staff and, mm -hmm. and the dedication, but uh, you can see Lucy Macon and Carol Richardson. And there is Brett Wood, I believe. Mm. I hope I have that right, Brett. Um, who were up there on that day for that photo shoot. Yeah, so they've, they've had a chance to, to see that view themselves. In yeah, person. yeah, so. Well, that's great. You just don't realize some, sometimes how much goes into a book like this right. um, when you're right. looking at the final product, but it was a really heroic effort on the part of you and our colleagues. Well, so. <laughs> yeah. Many colleagues gave more, more of themselves and their talent to make sure this book came out. It was exciting to, to work on it. Yeah, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Okay, great. Um, one is more of whether both, um, one's about the book and one's more about um, one of the paintings. So Dan would like to know more about the John the Baptist painting in the parlor, how Jefferson acquired it, and why is it displayed where it is in such a prominent place? I think you might have saw it in one of the pictures that we showed. Right, John, can we go back to the parlor so folks can see what we're talking about? It would have been one of the paintings that Jefferson acquired in the right. Yeah, it's to yeah. the right. Is that, isn't that um, 
Herodotus there? No? That's Salome with the head of That's John Salome. the Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I think of it as Salome, and I see John. Bell. So um, Jefferson, we think, I believe this is one of the original Jefferson mm -hmm. paintings at Monticello. Um, his art collection started uh, particularly in Europe, and um, he went to auctions in Paris and um, also commissioned works of art, like the three worthies that you see, mm -hmm. Bacon, Newton, and Locke. Um, but these history paintings, people are often sur surprised to find that Jefferson had them here because frequently they're biblical subjects, but they also had moral stories and that um, was very appealing to Jefferson. He wanted people, you didn't just go and relax in a room <laughs> at Monticello. There was always something didactic, something educational that he wanted to spur conversation for you when you we're here. Um, and also the way it's hung, um, we're really excited. We've been focusing on a couple of art lists that Jefferson left us. So we have a good idea about how he intended for these uh, works of art to be hung. And that's quite close to uh, hmm. where we think it was. Uh, also, one last point, it's in this European gallery style where you have the larger paintings at the top. And then as you go down, you see the smaller intimate paintings. Mm -hmm. I think we had a picture of some of the small intimate. We have that portrait of Jefferson, I think, still mm -hmm. in our stable of images. There, there we go. Mm -hmm. So there's an example of how the smaller works of art, which of course you'd never be able to see um, right. up at the top, how they were hung really at eye level. And this is one of our treasures, the portrait mm -hmm. of Jefferson by John Trumbull that was done in Paris. Um, in the parlor showing, as well. That yes, was, yeah. in the parlor mm -hmm. as well. And this uh, also speaks to this latest, um, we wanted to make sure we gave you the most recent information. So there you can see this soft blue-gray wall treatment as well. Mm -hmm. and you said there was Great, I have another question. question. This okay. one's more about the book. Billy asks if there are photos in the book of the dome room or views from it. Yes, yes, of course. We have the dome room and um, I think a couple different images mm -hmm. of the dome room. So. Um, you, you will be excited to see what Miguel does with that space, um, which is another room that's very hard to photograph. So mm -hmm. it's a successful image. I didn't bring one for us today. That's but. okay. When you buy the book, you can yeah, that's see right. the image. That's right. Um, <laughs> can you go back? We had a couple more art mm -hmm. images. There was, um, wanted to invite people to see, uh, for example, we had, Photographs of this original sculpture always sat in front of this fireplace in the entry hall. It's Ariadne. Mm -hmm. And um, in the interim, we were fortunate enough to have a grant and have her restored mm -hmm. and cleaned. So um, it's, 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 she's dazzling. She's where she belongs. And you have a better idea of um, the artistry involved in a marble sculpture like that. So um, really, it's a beautiful picture just, and even just the way that the I mean, it just almost looks like the fabric there the way it yeah. hangs with the light and he's very miguel he is very clever in giving us just enough of the wall to sort of anchor it and also again this composition you start from the left and you follow Ari ariadne's body to her hand to the orange right. wall and out of the composition it's um Beautiful image. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep going on about the new parlor <laughs> color, but it's a big, it's an exciting step for us at Monticello. We're looking forward to reinterpreting, reinstalling the parlor, and having this wall color uh, is really our initial starting mm -hmm. point. So more to come. Yeah. And I think we had the Jefferson, yeah, the one that we talked about mm -hmm. there. So. Yeah. Great. Well, um, can we talk about maybe some other people who are integral to making this book happen? Anyone else you want to recognize or talk well, about? Well, we, um, let's see, we, of course, um, I enjoyed, I mentioned my tennis match. I particularly enjoyed mm -hmm. working with one of our editors, Leslie Green Bowman. We, we got into the weeds sometimes to be very clear about, um, there's a beautiful image in the book about um, Martha Jefferson's music book mm -hmm. and really, mm -hmm it sort of spurred both of us to move forward and learn more about some of these objects that we 
um, pulled out for Miguel to photograph. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was that fun, was fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, and enriching. We we um, really had uh, you know I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I think she did too. Uh, and um, for me personally, I uh, got to work a little bit with Xavier Solomon, mm -hmm. who's this important art historian in, at the Frick Museum in New York. And um, in our conversations, we explored the ideas about Jefferson's um, material culture as it relates to art. But um, I benefited from these conversations mm -hmm. and my research benefited some because uh, in talking to him, we managed to work out some of the, the wording on these documents, like uh, the packing list of furniture and art that Jefferson sends home from France. And um, Xavier was right in pointing out that some of the mirrored glass on this list was probably unframed hmm. and that hmm. Jefferson had it framed later on in Philadelphia. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, unexpected benefits. <laughs> and, and, you know, sometimes working here at Monticello, I have the best colleagues. This is a really collegial bunch of people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's good to get off the farm sometimes. <laughs> and so talking to this art historian, um, you know, it was dynamic and it, it gave me some new ideas. Yeah, and that's interesting too. Like, I, I was just sitting here thinking, like, is there anything new that you found or anything that you didn't know about, you know, before you went into this? Um, anything you can think of? Anything I didn't know about? Well, there's so much I don't know. About, right. You know, right? <laughs> Jefferson's a lifelong learner. We're all lifelong learners. Um, well, I certainly, um, it would be some of the other S. I, I read this book and mm -hmm. enjoyed it. I want to make it perfectly clear. It's, um, uh, it's scholarly and readable and has, um, you know, Pers the ideas, the viewpoints from each of these authors, each essay has mm -hmm. its own sort of tone. And I learned incredible amount. I hadn't really thought about Monticello as a ferme orne, as a, as a, you know, a, an ornamental farm. Uh, I know he's experimenting with plants and seeds, and, but I hadn't really thought about it in that more European style. Hmm. Um, so that was interesting to me. And um, I, I actually knew very little about the broader landscape and, and thinking about, I mean, I know how the Rivanna River was mm -hmm. important for shipping objects to Monticello, but I hadn't really thought about it um, as almost the life stream of Jefferson, where his roots are, mm -hmm. Shadwell on the other side. And the canals, the the, I mean, yeah. how important it was to yeah. everything here, right? So, mm -hmm. Oh, there's just so much that I right. know that I've <laughs> learned from this project already. Yeah, and then we'll have people, um, there is much to look forward to in this. Um, you've talked a little bit about why this book is important, you know, highlighting some of the, the most recent and up-to-date um, offerings that we have at Monticello and information we found out. Is there anything else that you would want to call out that's important about this book? Well, I just want to reinforce that, um, again, it's two books. It has... Um, this remarkable content that, that makes clear Jefferson's lifelong interest in ideas and experimentation mm -hmm. in reason-based solutions for some of the innovations that you all recognize when you come here today, like the dumb waiters mm -hmm. and the, for the wine or the self-acting doors, um, that he was willing to, to experiment and, and try things. Sometimes I found the furniture not always successfully, but it was part of this vision. Um, Annette Gordon-Reed points out that there, if he had a vision for something, it, he never gave up on it. He mm -hmm. always tried to pursue that. And that was very, um, made sense to me in reading that. And that's what I seem to have encountered in my own research. And um, again, Monticello as this, um, experiment for both himself, mm -hmm. but he's also working out ideas for the new nation. Mm -hmm. He's inviting people to come here and see what he's experimenting with, whether it's in agriculture or his, his gadgets. Um, and sometimes he would be ridiculed for it, like his revolving chair mm -hmm. that we all see and know from mm -hmm. the writing group in the cabinet. There's, oh, 
There's an oh. amazing <laughs> photograph of it in the book on the there dress jacket. Um, he used this when he was in office, in political office. And we take for granted revolving chairs, but it was unusual. Mm -hmm. And eventually he's, um, you know, takes political flack for it. And he's ridiculed <laughs> for his whirly gig chair, which is not a charming, um, it's, it's really a slam. It's something that meant to be uh, like a child's toy. Mm. So it became a political detriment and he kept using it. It didn't matter because <laughs> he thought that this was beneficial object and people should embrace revolving chairs. Mm -hmm. So I know going down into my own personal <laughs> path, but you can see all of the web and, and, um, and I just do want to also reiterate, um, and I spent time working on the, the family and um, especially the enslaved uh, workers who were in the house in particular. And again, you know, Jefferson was privileged in being able to take time and mm. do this. Yeah. And this was only because of, um, you know, a system where he was the patriarch and everyone had to support him, including mm -hmm. his family and the enslaved workers. Right. Right, that's an important point to remember. Yeah. So, okay, well, this has been fascinating, and I've loved all the images and everything you told us about. So, finally, where can we buy the book? Where can we buy the book? Oh, look at that! <laughs> I look at look at that, and I'm mortified that I had the wrong facade when we started. But I know what it is. We got now. it. <laughs> you are going to come to our bookshop, our mm -hmm. our museum shop here at the mountain, because we want you to come and visit and see mm -hmm. these spaces. But if that won't happen in the short term, we have it available on, uh, on our monticelloshop.org, I think. We do. Yeah, we'll put the link you know? in the comments. So, Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can order it online from us. And um, I think the, here's another reason why this book is so important. Mm -hmm. Because we are limited, some of us, in our travel right now. Mm -hmm. um, I found that these images were so compelling, sometimes you really felt like you were in the space. Mm, and true. so let's think of this as, a, as an essential stand-in and, yeah. um, and also an enriching um, book to keep us going until we all reunite here again soon. That's perfect. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Diane, oh, for being you. here with me today. Thank, thank you, you all for tuning in at home and um, go buy the book. Yeah. Uh, and then join That's us great. next week um, for our next Monticello live stream.